Welcome to this tutorial about creating a background animation in Blazor. What do I exactly mean with background? I mean two things. The first thing is it will run concurrently in the background, so it won't tie up our main thread. And the second thing is it is meant to be, as the name says, in the background of, a, of an application. But the second uh, point is not that important. You can let your own imagination play. So I going, I'm going to create everything in the main layout component here. But I start here in the host razor page. Here I'm just deleting the reference references to the CSS files. And here I'm going to set the display property to none so that we don't see the error message. But that's already it. From now on, everything will happen in this component here. So here in the code block, I'm going to create a list of tuples. I'm going to name the parts of the tuple. The tuple will have an integer and a boolean. Then I will That's the wrong. Uh, it has to be in the namespace system. But threading. So first, I'm going to import the namespace system threading. Here, I'm defining a field of type cancellation token source. Going to name it CTS. Then I'm going to create a field cancellation token. Name it CT. Now here in the initialized method. I could also go with the synchronous one, but I'm choosing the asynchronous version here. I'm going to create the, the list of the tuple. Uh, here I just made a mistake. Dots, I thought about doing something with dots that are animated. I just call it, uh, I just call it UIs. Maybe not the best name, but if you're a regular on this channel, you know that the naming is not is not perfect. So in here, I'm going to create a new tuple. The first thing here has to be of type integer, which is the, the S that we are getting passed in here, which is a number from 0 to 25 ascending. And the second, the Boolean is, is false. And here I have to call to list. Now I'm going to initialize the cancellation token source and I'm going to get the token out of the cancellation token source. Now I also have to create a field type random because I have we want to randomize the, the, yeah, the display or the, the animation. Now in here, because I want to run it concurrently, I have to create an asynchronous method. I mean, you also could have uh, run something in concurrent if you create a parallel running method. Uh, but here, we are not going to spin up a, a new dedicated thread because it's not that intensive to compute the whole thing. Now, you may have asked, uh, why do I have the cancellation token? Why am I working with them? Because the thing is, if you don't use cancellation tokens, and the user leaves the page, then the, this method here will, would just run as normal. And we would have, at some point, have so many methods, so many yeah, f things that are running. We only, if the user is leaving the site, we are triggering the cancellation token to, to cancel, so the cancellation token source to cancel, and so that this code here is getting determined. Now here I'm going to create also a list of int and call it numbers because we are, so here I'm just going all, all the time, I'm going to initialize it here a new or assign a new value to it. Now, why am I doing this? Because I also want to not only randomize the UI that I'm animating, but I also want to uh, randomize the amount. So at least one 
maximum three because four is the upper limit. So it's we have here three possible outcomes, one, two, and three. So these are the yeah, the, the possibilities of numbers that we can animate. And now in here, I'm just going to call the next method on random, starting by one up to 26. Again, 26 is the upper limit so that we can randomly generate a number between zero and, and 26 with 25, the highest uh, possible number. Now, the, the UIs are of type list. So I have the for each method. Here, I'm just setting animated to false. So I'm resetting everything. Now for each is actually, uh, it mutates the list here in, oh, I'm always typing dots. Now I'm using UIs as a name. Now, why am I uh, going into mutating and not mutating? Because Lynch is actually not mutating it. So we have to reassign it. Now here I'm going to ask if numbers contains UI.count, again, the naming is not perfect. I'm here using the ternary operator. Then I'm going to select UI count true. Otherwise, I'm going to select UI count and false. And here again, I have to call to list. So now here I call status changed because we are in an asynchronous method. The placer diffing algorithm can't on its own figure out when it has to re-render. And here I'm just going to say it has to asynchronously wait five seconds. Now, here, of course, somewhere, I have to create the whole markup for it because I've deleted every reference to the CSS files I have also to style the body a bit, otherwise we would see the scroll bars. So margin zero. Then here, going to create a class container, height, under viewport height, so the whole screen, display grid. Now you have seen here 25. We have place for 25 UI elements. Therefore, I'm going to create a grid, grid with four columns. Uh, with five columns and five rows so that we have 25 items in total. And then I'm going to create another class, UI height 100% with also 100%. And now somewhere I have to actually divide the animation. Now I do this in here. I have to add two add signs here because we are in a razor component in a CSS file, you only need one. And here the animation is very simple. We just say does the background color gets darker blue. So we start out transparent white and then halfway in the animation it's getting darker blue. Now here we just step over all the elements. So first we create a container. And then here we, for each over all the elements in UIs, and then we make a little, if, if animated, then UI style animation, animate now five seconds. Yeah, I'll just say linear. Here we have five seconds because we have specified here to pause also to five seconds. And otherwise, if the animated is false, we're just going to create a new UI without the animation. Now, one thing is missing. We have here the cancellation token source, but nowhere are we actually triggering the cancel method on it. So I'm going to implement iDisposable Therefore, I have to have a method that is called dispose. Here I'm writing the method with the expression syntax cts.cancel. So 
as I've told you, we have to do this. Otherwise, you would have so many methods running and nobody is actually getting, uh, getting anything out of it. So let's have a look. Okay, yeah, I've completely forgot one thing here. Of course, I have to invoke the method and pass it our consolation token. Now here we will have greet squigglies because it is asynchronous or it is returning a task and we are not awaiting the task, but that's, ex that's exactly what we want. If we here would await it, well, it also depends on the render mode. So. Now we start here with one and you have seen that we started out and it was like a bit flickery. That's because of the of the render mode that we have specified as server pre-rendered. Now you see here the option, we can also animate two. Yeah, so that's it. I think the most important part of the video is that we have to implement iDisposable in order to, if we close the application, to finish the finish the, the running of the method. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.